Hello and welcome members. Prepare Azure VM of Windows 11. And right now in this video, we will show you how to deploy a Windows 11 virtual machine on Azure. And also in this video, we will guide you through the steps to create and configure a Windows 11 VM. Perfect for testing or deployment environments. Now here you can see that in the previous starting video, we have shown you that how to proceed with the initialization of Windows 11 in your device. But right now we are going to give you the understanding that if you don't have the Windows 11 environment or if you don't have the Windows 11 machine or operating system in your laptop or desktop, so how you can get the Windows 11 machine from the Azure portal, from the Azure, and this VM will help you to totally understand the codes and the options and the skills and the tools we are using throughout this video series you can apply on this VM and that will definitely you know help you out to understand the easy steps that we are showing in this video now let's move to the Azure portal and before moving to the Azure portal let me clear you one thing that right now we are using our subscription that we are using in our different environments but to get the Azure access we will create a separate video regarding how to get the trial access on Microsoft Azure that will clearly give you the idea and the understanding that how you get the trial access to get the Azure VM but right now we are directly and specifically show you the steps that once you have the Azure access and the subscription, then which tools and option you should select and go for to get the Windows 11 VM. Now let's move to the Azure portal that is already logged here. And let me set it to fit on the screen. So here you can see that we have multiple options as we have logged into the Azure portal and there are different ways to get to the Azure VM feature you can click here like directly you can type VM and then you will get the virtual machine option or you can click click to create a resource and it also navigates you here to the marketplace and you can click here to create the virtual machine so there are different ways to you can get to navigate to the virtual machine option now let's click to the create button on the virtual machine and it will navigate you directly to the fields to the basic tab where you have to put the basic and the default and whatever you make up in your mind you can put here like the basic details like the VM name but this is limited to the VM name because the region and availability options and zone options are default options you just have to select and tick on these options to proceed now here on top you can see that first you need to select the subscription that is pre-selected which is Azure subscription one that we are using con continuously in our Azure related courses now right now after the subscription you have the resource group option and against the resource group we are going to use our learning resource group the task resource group that we are frequently using in all of our Azure video, video series which are available on the GSS portal. Now for the VM name, currently we are going to go with the GSS Win 11. I'm going to use E for 11. And the region could be any region. It depend upon, depends upon your requirement. And as for the learning purpose, you should go with the default but it's, it up, it's up to you. Let's say if you are watching this video from Australia, so Australia East would be good, or you can 
find out that where you live, like in east or west or north, whatever the location, you can select here because that does what where your VM will be deployed. So when you want to access the VM, so if you start getting delay, delays in input output, that means that there's a delay and latency from your network to the Microsoft data center where this VM is created. So you have to be sure and you have to be informed while creating the VM that which region is most nearest to your location that will eliminate the chances of latency in the connectivity to the VM. So right now, as for the defaults information, we are going to go with the East US. And remember that we are deploying this VM for the lending purpose, for testing purpose, because most of the viewers who don't have the Windows 11 on their machines, on their laptop, can easily get the Windows 11 VM from the Azure, and then they can understand the Windows 11 environment. So for the availability zone, if you want to understand these things and these, you know, terminologies, you should log on to the JSS for our AZ-104 codes or our AZ-900 codes, where we have explained all that stuff. But here in this video, we are specifically, in this series, specifically we are giving the detail regarding the Windows 11 environment. So we are not going to discuss all these things in depth. But for the understanding and for learning purpose, the availability zone does what? That it gives you the redundancy for your VM. Let's say your VM is deployed in a data center where you have a rack that contains the server or any equipment that contain your VM. And if that specific data center or server goes down so your your VM must be replicated or must be available on another data center or maybe there there's an there's an outage on whole data center side and if you didn't select the availability zone so you will no longer access to your VM so this availability zone enables you to do what to distribute your VM your resource to different Microsoft data center across that specific region. Now the availability zone currently is zone one and there are you know three zones as you can see and it adds some more redundancy and it required you know more detail discussion on this topic. But right now we are going to go with the defaults and this is a security type for your VM which is by default trusted launch virtual machines. Now for the image, right now it is Windows 11 Pro version 22H2 and it is 64-bit Gen 2. So this is the standard and default Windows 11 OS we can get here on the Azure. And the VM architecture is 64-bit which is good. And this is the default and our size that we use continuously frequently in our Azure environment but you can go for higher sizes and SKUs as well but right now this is enough to have the VM of this like two virtual CPUs and it gets eight gigs of memory and you can see the cost as well because whenever when you go above and when you increase the SKUs that definitely incurs some more cost on your subscription, on your monthly billing. Then these are some basic more options that you can enable or disable. And here's the username and details that you need to fill. Well, you can see that we have typed the passwords and the username. Then for the inbound port, this is important because if you go with the none, so the firewall of the Windows will not let you to connect to the machine. So to get connected to the machine, you should allow the selected port for RDP because basically for initial access to your VM, you required 
RDP connection to be open for inbound network because you're coming from the outside. So we are going to go with the RDP, but if you want to enable other services, then you can make checks on these other services as well. Or later on, after the VM is deployed, you can add the rule in the Windows Firewall and that will enable these ports and let your connection to be maintained. Then the licensing and here it is saying that I confirm I have an eligible Windows 10 level license with multi-tenant hosting rights. So you should go with this option. Then you can, if you want to have multiple disks and if you want to manage your disk, let's say right now it is a premium SSD, you, that definitely affect the cost. So you can go for, for the standard as well. That will, you know, decrease the cost a little bit, but it will impact your VM, your workload. But right now you can see that we are creating, you know, the VM for the testing and for the learning purpose. So here you can see the details that are mentioned below these plans. So if you go for the premium SSD, the best for protection and performance sensitive workloads, for a standard SSD, best for web server, lightly used enterprise application and dev tasks, standard ADD, best for backup, non-critical and infrequent access. So we need to access this VM a lot. So this would not be a good choice for us. And here's the thing again, zone redundant storage data is replicated to three zones. So if we select any of the plan from here, so that will definitely replicate your data on different zone. So for this right now, we will go with the default. That is the premium SSD. And here's the key management. And this is something more advanced stuff which you can get and which you can learn from our AZ-104 course that is available on our website, on our JSS video library. So right now, let's go with the default here. And here you can attach some more disks, additional disks to your VM as well. Then we switch to the networking. And here on the networking, you can see that it's selected a default network because we have created a lot of VMs in the same resource group, in the same subscription. That's why it selected our previously created virtual network, but you can create the new network every time when you want. And this is the subnet where this VM will be reside and from where it will get the address and the public IP, it will create the new public IP with the machine name you can see here and the NIC security group, which is currently basic. You can go for none as well. But if you go for the none, all the ports on the VM will be exposed to the public network. So some kind of security group is important. And if you go for the advanced, so you can, let's say, for example, you can deploy a single NSG for your whole VM environment and you can use the basic or you can say your default NSG in each and every Windows environment or in the each and every VM and it is according to your environment and your organization compliance. So right now we're not going into the depth but if you want to go to the depth of these topics you can get the course on the GSS jobskillshare.org. Then it's all good. We are not going to add any load balancing and that this will be more advanced stuff. Monitoring, we don't need right now some metrics or monitoring because this is for the learning purpose and tags and review. So let's review all the inputs we have made because it runs the validation before creating the resource as per your requirement. 
and the validation has been passed so let's click to create and here on the right top corner you can see the notification it says initializing deployment so the deployment has been initialized and it will take few more whiles to create the VM and then it will give you the option to directly jump to that newly created resource well the VM has been deployed so let's click to go to the resource and when you click here it will directly navigate you to the VM now here on top by just looking looking at looking at it you can see that the stop button is available which means your VM is started and you should know that when your VM is started it just at the cost on your monthly billing on your subscription so it is recommended and it would be cost saving for you that every time when you are done with your VM you should stop the VM by clicking here and right now your VM is currently on working status you can see the status tells it's running so let's click to the connect so to get the RDP access to the VM you should click to the connect and here download RDP file so you can copy the IP address from here as well and then you can start getting access to the VM or you can download the RDP file from here and then click to the file and here you will see this option and it is the same that happens when you take RDP to your local VM as well and here you should type the same password that you type while deploying the VM and you can go the remember me and click OK and here's a certificate and I'm going to stop the video right now here because in the next video we will show you how to initialize Windows 11 machine and then afterwards we will show you the Windows 11 different tools and we will specifically talk about the Windows 11 environment and you will see the Windows 11 all over the video but right now we're stopping the video here and we will continue in the next video.